The House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. Well, welcome back into the House of Mystery. I'm your host today, Al Warren, and joining me from the UK is Julie Sav. How are you doing, Jewel? I'm good, thanks, Al. A uh, long time we speak. How is everything over there? Everything's fine over here. It's the same old, same old. There's, uh, there's always uh, um, seems to be a shock and outrage every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's over day day six hundred on the crazy train over here. So we're we're ah. on we're on the runaway train. We're loose all over the place. Yep. How is I, I will I will say, Julie. I I had a workshop over in. Henley on the Thames uh, several okay. years ago. It was so beautiful. Really loved that place. Oh, that's, that's very good to hear. It's, um, it's a beautiful place, the UK, depending on where you go, and same as anywhere. Um, sure. Since since I was um, last kind of working with, with Al and with Kevin, I've moved actually from Cyprus back to the UK. So it's been a really busy couple of weeks, but it's, it's great to be back in the UK. Great. Yeah, good to get out of Cyprus. Weather will be different, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's very misty and rainy, and we've had a couple of storms um, um, hitting us. We're right on the west coast, so it's a. Yep. Yeah. We couldn't be further southwest if we tried. Mm. Good. Back to the rain. Back to yep. the rain. It's all good. <laughs> it's good for the skin, right? That's what they say. And the frizzy hair. Yeah. <laughs> if I had hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Okay, well, and who's talking and who's joining us is Tom T. Moore. Now, uh, of course, uh, he's written several books. We're going to kind of try and cover a few of them today or maybe touch off on all of them. It's just there's a lot to talk about. Um, it's good to meet you, Tom. Nice to meet you, and and hello to everybody out in your listening audience. I'm sorry to, to jump in there early. No, that's <laughs> I all right. That's... I had not been introduced yet. No, <laughs> sometimes... Sometimes people do, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't want to get involved in the conversation. <laughs> it gets it gets a little tense. Um, let's talk about you here, um, Mr. Tom Moore. Um, where did this all start for you? I mean, you've written the Gentle Way. Looks like one, two, and three. You've got uh, First Contact, um, Atlantis, and Lemur Lemuria. Um, where did that all come from for you? Like, what what started it? Oh, I, um, I uh, a number of years ago, about 20, I read a spiritual, spiritual article in the Sedona Journal of Emergence written by Robert Shapiro, and he was channeling a, uh, a being by the name of Zosh. And Zosh said, uh, you can request benevolent outcomes in your life. And for some reason at that time, I didn't know why, it struck a, a bell. And so I said, hmm, I think I might try that uh, because I'd tried all these modalities. I mean, I'd gone through astrology. I'd made a lot of money uh, <laughs> through astrology in my business, uh, uh, and my business is not astrology. And um, uh, and then I'd, I'd tried numerology and all these other modal modalities as I was kind of searching through, and the law of attraction, it didn't work very good. And so, uh, so I started experimenting with benevolent outcomes, and I kind of created how to say it myself, and and it worked perfectly. And I said, "Wow, this is fantastic!" And so I wound up starting to write an article or two for the Sedona Journal, and um, uh, and so it really kind of proceeded from there. It really struck a nerve with other people, and they started trying it and found out how fantastic it was and uh, then lo and behold in 2005 I uh, went to a, a, a seminar in Sedona uh, put on by a, a million selling author by the name of Dick Sutphen S-U-T-P-H-E-N and uh, uh, it was to increase your, your psychic abilities so uh, when he had us doing automatic writing instead of doing that I uh, decided to try and speak to this Indian shaman that had been channeled by Robert Shapiro for me uh, by the name of Reveals the Mysteries, and he had told me that my uh, soul contract was not 
to support uh, Robert's work, and I thought that was very strange. So when he put us under, when Dix put us under, I said, reveals the mysteries, are you there? And he says, yes, I am, Tom. And I said, wow, this is neat. And so I asked him, you know, why, what, why was I doing this stuff? And, you know, it seemed to be leading the charge. And he said, Tom, he said, you're an Indian shaman living at the same time I am here in the 1600s. Your name is Stillwater, and you have incarnated into the 20th and 21st centuries to reintroduce people to the gentle way. So that's kind of how it started, and, and I've asked thousands and thousands of questions since that time of uh, my guardian angel, who I'd named Theo, and Gaia, the soul of the earth, and I've talked to all sorts of people, and, 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 and including uh, Reveals the Mysteries, who's now my main guide, by the way. So that's how it started. Wow. So, Tom, before all of this, who would you say you were before, and what were your abilities before you had this kind of almost an awakening? Who was I before? Yes. What What were your abilities or your beliefs before this kind of this kind oh, of? Ins- I was a seeker of knowledge. I I read probably uh, almost every metaphysical book out there that I could find, and and as I say, when I first started out, um, there was this astrologer in Dallas whose hobby was the uh, the Dallas Cowboys. And he said, well, the Cowboys are not going to the Super Bowl this year, but they're, but they're going next year. And I said, boy, isn't that neat? And I tore the article out of the, out of the Dallas Morning News and put it in my desk. And uh, after the football season, he hit on 80% of the, of the reasons. And, um, and so I said, gosh, I don't know how it works, but I, I – um, reserved 300 seats on Braniff Airlines uh, to Miami for the next year and was the very first tour operator in Dallas to ever run a trip to the Super Bowl. And and I already had a, a, a travel club that was for profit at that time. It eventually became a travel agency and then uh, eventually an international wholesale tour company. Uh, we were running, as an example, tours to the Cayman uh, islands were the second largest in the United States to do that, and Las Vegas, and and uh, the the ski club uh, was my first love, and continued to do that quite a long time. So but, I, I I was a businessman, but uh, still um, I I explored anything and everything, including dreams. Um, in nineteen 19- 79, my wife and I were supposed to go to a, 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 uh, uh, a, a World Congress in Manila, and I had a dream of an explosion and a woman and some men involved. And so we changed and did not go to Manila, went to Hong Kong and Taipei, added those days on there. And on the first day of the Congress, uh, uh, the terrorists exploded the bomb in the front of the hall and injured 10 travel agents. And uh, they arrested a, a a woman and four men. And after that, I said, "I'm going to record my dreams the rest of my life." And I have. So dreams are are, are messages from your soul. I've had many uh, uh, clear, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Not clear all uh, Many uh, uh, prognostic dreams since that time. So when you when you were young, much younger, and growing up, were you aware that you you had I mean, I suppose, you, uh, and, and you very quickly um, corrected yourself when you said clairaudient. But what 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 would your strengths be? Would you say? Would you, are you clairaudient or, or clairvoyant, no. clairsentient, or are you? Was it through astrology that your interest developed, and, and then the dreams, and then? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, from the very early age, yes, I had, I could have gut feelings. Now, gut feelings are part of telepathy. Okay. Yeah. I, I consider mine a, uh, I, uh, myself a self-trained telepath. Okay. Uh-huh. Because and everybody is a telepath because everyone has the pineal gland at the back of your heads and that acts as an antenna, a receptor. And and you may call it ESP or you may call it gut instinct or oh gosh I need to call Aunt Martha and sure enough something has happened to Aunt Martha. 
uh, all those are telepathic messages to you. And I've just been able to uh, to develop it over a period of time, and I did that by allowing people to email me and ask questions. I was always a person that when I'd read these channeled messages in the Sedona Journal of Emergence or wh- wherever, um, I'd say, gosh, I'd, I'd love to ask an, an extra question here, but there was nobody to ask it to. And and so I allowed, uh, I started putting out this newsletter in 2007, and almost immediately it went from once a month to once every two weeks to one a week. And, and my newsletters these days are uh, 10 to 13 pages long every single week, 52 weeks a year. Okay, so now I'm fascinated. So bear with me, Tom. Okay. So you've just mentioned about telepathy. Now, one of the key things as a medium that I would I questioned in my very, very early development was mm-hmm. how do I know that the information I'm, I'm receiving is from spirit? And how okay. how can I rule out that I am using telepathy to communicate with the individual in front of me as opposed to getting information from another source, i.e. spirit and those that have passed over? How, okay. what, what, how, how do you understand the difference? Okay. First of all, uh, telepathy uses a pathway that scientists have yet to discover. Okay? okay. Uh, you can be across the table from someone a la, uh, like the Ryan Institute um, uh, uh, experiments at Duke University, and, and you yep. can Google uh, Ryan Institute images, and you'll see you know a couple of people facing each other with a board in between them, and they're trying to do the Zinner cards. Okay. Yes. And sir. and so uh, you can you can do that uh, across the table, across the campus, uh, across halfway across the world. It, uh, or even across the universe, and it's instantaneous communication, which is very, going to be very important one day for two reasons. Number one, it could be used, let's say, on the Mars mission. Okay, They really should experiment with having two twins. See, one of the problems with the, the Ryan Institute is that they drag people off the, week, uh, the street that would not know each other. You start having people that have, like an old married couple or... Uh, are twins, or uh, like they did for for the space station, and, and you start having people like that that really are tuned into each other, and and then you work with them. You don't you don't just uh, oh let's just try it here, let's just try it there. You let them go into a meditative state, and that's where it's so easy to receive and and send messages. Okay, so do you would you Oh, this is complicated stuff, isn't it? Right. So would you then agree that you can link telepathically to spirit or would you just say this works on a on a kind of our our plane, if I want a better phrase? Oh, no. I mean, because I, I communicate with spirit, uh, you know, several times a week. I mean, this morning I had a, an hour, hour and a half session where, where I had a whole list of questions that had been sent in to me from people all over the world, and, and I, I ask uh, my guardian angel, Theo, and, and Gaia, and, and uh, my uh, uh, soul cluster brother, Antura, who's, uh, who's an amphibian on a, uh, that lives on a water world in uh, uh, the Sirius B star system, although he's orbiting overhead right now. And, uh, and so I'm able to communicate telepathically with all these people, or beings, and, uh, and and you can do it with an individual, or you can do it with spirit. And, now, and do you think it's easy to understand the difference? Well, sure, because you say, I wish to speak to Gaia, or I wish to speak to Theo, or, uh, uh, you know, I wish to speak to my guardian angel. I mean, that's what I always tell people to start with, because your guardian angel is your best friend, Okay. But, but before you do, typically I, I tell everybody you've got to surround yourself with white light, a bubble of white light. Ever, lots of people teach that. And, um, uh, and if, if who you're speaking with starts trying to tell you to do things, then cut, up, cut them off, surround yourself with white light, and, and go find somebody else because 
uh, in all the years that I've been speaking to Theo and Gaia and everybody, no, they, none of them will ever tell you to do something. They say, you've got to choose your own path. That's what you're, why you're on earth. That's why you're having these lives. You have to make your own decisions. And as long as, as you have loving entities like that that you're communicating with, then you're fine. I mean, I've certainly said on many, on many occasions to people that I've read for, um, Spirit, do not give you the ABC of life because we are here to learn lessons. And therefore, if they were to answer you every minute detail and every question, clearly you wouldn't, you wouldn't be out there to learn anything. Um, so, I, you know, but, there, but there's a reason for that, you understand. Absolutely. And, okay. Uh, on Monday night, I just taught a new class um, uh, to a group. It's called the Earth Experiment. And part of the Earth experiment is that our souls volunteered, okay, uh, to have these lives on Earth. One, to uh, it would uh, fast track raising their vibrational levels, which some people call ascension, okay. But but our eventual goal is is to all meld together thousands of years from now uh, and, and become a creator. That's never been done in any other universe. And there's billions of universes and billions of creators, of course. And, and we're all going to meld together, become a creator, and take over running this universe and allow the creator of this universe to go to a higher level. So that's our goal, and that's why we're veiled. We have to make all of these decisions on our own, these millions and billions of decisions, because eventually we're going to have to do that as a creator. Okay. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think whoever, I, I mean, I, I've been a medium for many years and um, okay. it's a situation to yourself. And I, and, I, and I think there are so many different ways of describing this stuff. And, um, and inherently we're all on the same kind of uh, pathway. Um, but yes. how we see things is very different sometimes. And I, I, for one, believe very much in just keeping mediumship incredibly simple. Um, and I, I receive information, I give information. I've got very, very clear values and morals around that. And, um, you know, I'm not somebody who's going to walk along the street and suddenly pull somebody off and start reading for them. I disagree with all of that stuff. Um, but I, and, and I, and I just give the information that I'm meant to give and I support people to understand it where necessary. But I don't kind of get into, and I, and I don't, um, I don't raise a vibration. I not knowingly. Um, I, I don't meditate, and I don't switch on and switch off. So there are certain uh-huh. things that I that the language we use sometimes can, can cause a barrier between people. Uh-huh. So how how have you used your your expertise, your knowledge, and clearly a wealth of experience to develop your books, um, which inherently are a, a, a self help guide to helping us to understand kind of these realms further and to and to believe in angels and, and what they bring to us well okay <laughs> I, I guess that's a big question um i've i've been told you know that uh, as i explained earlier that i'm reintroducing the gentle way to people okay a, a way to live by requesting benevolent outcomes in your life and when you say i when you start out with the mundane requests, like I request the most benevolent outcome for my drive to, you know, uh, wherever. Uh, thank you. I always say thank you. Um, uh, that that goes to your, in my belief system, understand, because that's what I've been told, is that that goes to your guardian angel, and uh, the, your guardian angel looks at your uh, soul contract, and if that request is within your soul contract, then then you will get that. And that's what uh, the amazing thing about requesting benevolent outcomes is, is that if you don't get it, it's because something better is on the way. And so when I'm, when I'm doing these meditative sessions where I'm asking questions for people, uh, I tell people I don't do personal readings. I only do things about big things, you know, uh, the earth and and uh, politics and <laughs> whatever, whatever I can receive. And, and also I've had to learn about probabilities, and that was extremely hard for me uh, to learn. I, I learned the hard way um, that 
there are probabilities to everything. The farther out you go, there's thousands of probabilities for any given day. The closer you get to that date, the, the probabilities shrink and shrink and shrink till maybe there's only a couple of probabilities for that particular day. So uh, there's many things that, that go in. Our, our, our lives are much, much more complex than we realize, and, and my job has been to further explain the complexity of life to people uh, as compared to, oh gosh, um, uh, you know, just going with what was written two or three or four thousand years ago, and and it's much more complex and much more beautiful than people can realize. We have a very loving Creator. A lot of people don't believe that. Oh, He's a vengeful Creator. You know, He did this and did this. He's a very loving, loving Creator. And, and there's only one of them. No matter what he's called. <laughs> so. so, so how do you, how do you how do you interpret that with religion then? Like, um, do you have to believe in in a certain creator to uh, to do what you do? Well, you know, I've been told that you know there's only one creator for our universe, and and uh, uh, so we start with that point. Uh, I've also been told there's billions of other creators. I, uh, Theo, my guardian angel, says that that our creator would be ranked in the top five of all those billions because our creator decided to have this Earth experiment uh, where none of these uh, other universes had ever been able to work with anything but there are ten positive energies. See, now this is something that supposedly our scientists will not prove for many, many years. and But there's four negative energies. And so our creator uh, asked for volunteers to take part in the Earth experiment to see if if we could uh, work with these four negative energies. And for a long time, we kept destroying ourselves. That's why there's no Atlantis. That's why there's no uh, Lemuria, uh, uh, as an example, from Mars. But uh, eventually, in August of 1987, there was the harmonic convergence in and that was a really big time because at that point in time, we reached a vibrational level where we will never destroy ourselves again. There will never be another continent-destroying war. Okay, Only small conflicts, and those will slowly but surely die out over the next hundred years or so. So when you ask, what, what kind of things do you ask your guardian angel um, about the world. Oh, well, uh, you know, I sent you um, a uh, uh, article I just sent into the Sedona Journal uh, a few days ago for their uh, 2019 predictions. And um, uh, so, as an example, uh, I ask because of all the stuff happening with uh, with the Catholic Church and their pedophile priests and everything. Uh, I was told uh, uh, while just not too long ago that uh, Pope Francis would be forced to resign, and so in in the last uh, the last time that uh, not not this morning, but the last time I I did a, a session, I asked what was the probability of the Pope resigning in 2019, and I was told it was 100 percent. Now, uh, you know. They're, uh, they're going to have a big meeting of the cardinals and bishops in the Ven- at the Vatican with, uh, uh, on February 24th. I wonder if that's when it's going to happen or whether it will come later. But supposedly it's 100% probability that happened. I've been told uh, the probability of, of Trump, uh, President Trump getting a second term is 80%. As I was told, it's not a slam dunk, but... Uh, it's still a pretty high probability, and if he is elected for a second term, it, uh, he will serve all of it. He will not be impeached or assassinated. Um, and uh, I've, I've been told that these elections coming up will uh, uh, the uh, the Democrats will take over the uh, the Senate, but they will not be able to take over the House. So I, I, these are some of the things that I. I ask about. 
Now, so can can anybody do this? How how does and if so, how does one uh, get in touch with their uh, guardian angel? Well, of course, you can simply say, uh, guardian angel. You know, what is your name? What name shall I call you? And and the name that you get may be something that pops right up in your brain uh, immediately, or it may take a couple of weeks, like it did me, because. I've been told by my guardian angel, Theo, that um, it's, uh, gosh, how to, uh, we can't pronounce angelic names, okay? We can only um, uh, come up with a name that sounds good to us. Now, since that time, I found out that uh, in a few hundred lives, I've called my guardian angel, Theo. I didn't know that till after I was already calling him that. Okay, you have so to understand, um, I'm, I'm an old old soul. I've had I'm on my thousand and fifth life. Supposedly, I'm one of ten people in the world that have had that many lives. Wow, and 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 um, and slightly raising this as in a humorous way, clearly, Tom. And um, for those people who then, because obviously there there are beliefs out there that you you are reincarnated because you haven't learned those lessons in the previous life, and you just keep yeah, going and keep going. So you aren't doing I know. Through- I, I, in, in fact, <laughs> I, when when I was told, I said, "Whoa, how many lives have I had?" Oh, you're on your thousand and fifth. I said, "Boy, I must be a slow learner." Yeah. And and they laughed and they said, "No, Tom, you keep coming back to push people along." So oh, that's, wow. that's the the answer I got. That was the right answer, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and, but what was what was bad about it is that I, just not too long, too many months ago, I asked, "Well, uh, you know, how many how many more lives do I have?" You have to understand, my sole interest are religions, and I've been around for the start of every major religion in the world. Okay, that's my sole interest. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, so I said, oh, you know, have I done them all now? And I was told, no, you've got two more to go. Uh, and, in fact, one, uh, there's a friend of mine that lived across the street from me when we were growing up boys, and he became a, a minister, I won't say for which faith, but I, I was recently told that he's going to be the one to start a new religion. Now, the religion, you have to understand, has already been started, but we we don't go vertically with our lives. We can hop, like my, my wife, her next life is going to be back about 12,000, you know, 600, 500 years ago, uh, back in ancient Egypt. She's she's going to be he, and he's going to be a, a leader of his uh uh, a great leader of his people, and I'm going to be his assistant. And um, uh, but I've already had that life; it's a past life for me. It's very confusing, but that's the way it works. So um, when when you oh, this is fascinating. Sorry. So there's a couple of questions I have that are going on and on in my head. So if if spirit, if your guides or your guardian angel, as you refer to them, I would refer to mine as a guide. So. Yeah, um, and, that's, that's, and we can get into guides because because guides are different from guardian angels. Okay. okay. So so you would speak to to your um, guardian angel and and they would say this this is what's going to happen. So the stuff with with the, Trump. This is a probability. Probability okay. sixty percent or seventy percent or eighty percent or one hundred percent, whatever it happens to be. What's what's the purpose of you having that information? I mean, what what are you going to do with that information that's going to make a difference? Hmm. Well, people ask these things, and I think it's part of teaching uh, because I didn't understand anything about probabilities, okay? And probabilities are real, real big in the world. So it's, they tell me that all the stuff that I've received so far is just like the tip of the iceberg. I still have so far to go. Hmm. So all I can tell you is, is that they said you can ask us any question but it has to be specific. It cannot yeah. be just some general thing. Well, what's going to happen next year in 2019? Can't do that. You've got to say, okay, what What about forest fires? Yes, they're going to be really bad again next year. That kind of stuff. And and hurricanes. Now, see, one of the things I've learned uh, is that uh, I, uh, I 
on my Facebook and in my newsletter, um, I had people saying a benevolent prayer to reduce the wind and rain for uh, for Hurricane Florence as it approached the coast. It was 140 miles an hour, and they were, were predicting it was going to be a Cat 3, uh, 110 or 20 miles an hour when it hit land. We got it. Uh, I had several thousand people saying this benevolent prayer out loud, and, and this created a great energy, and it lowered the wind speed down to 90. You can. Uh, I've been told we can do things like that. If we have enough people, we could have even uh, completely uh, broke the hurricane apart, or at least turned it on out to sea. We wow. just don't have enough people yet. That's, that's very powerful. Um, I mean, and the next question I have to ask you really is: I'm not even sure if I if I want to ask you, and I, this, and I, and I don't understand even know why I feel that way. But I, I'm I'm going to ask you because I think it's something that people would have probably picked up on and would be interested in. You you've mentioned that your one you know your, one of your your key purposes, your sole purpose actually, is to is around religion, and um, you've been around for the be- beginning of of, of the majority of religions or all religions, I can't remember the exact words you used, Tom. But and and you also mentioned that, you know, this kind of coming back and guiding and moving people along is another key purpose that you have when we were talking and I, I brought in about the kind of reincarnation and some of the theories around that. Now, if you were to come along and, and to move people in a direction in the right direction as is your key role and you're there with all of these major religions there will be people that say to that, well, actually, those religions have been the cause of so many um, wars, deaths to innocent people. What, why would one person be tasked with that? And, and yet it's not doesn't seem to be making a, a huge impact, a huge difference on the way that we in society treat different beliefs and views and, and, and have respect for each other. What oh, we are. Be? We're going to get much more loving in the in the years ahead and and i'm i'm going to help with that um we haven't and we can get into it later uh should you wish but uh because of my experience uh, in being in the international film and tv distribution business and having been co-executive producer of some very super low budget movies i'm uh my family and i are supposed to uh shoot a documentary on board a Syrian mothership coming up, and that will show um, uh, people from 37 different planets, uh, every single type of being almost you can imagine, all living and working uh, in uh, in one of these huge motherships. And I hope to be able to put out to uh, show people that just because we have different skin colors or whatever, um, we can all get along together. So that's going to be one of my future projects coming up and can you remember in in the the very many lives that you've already had around the time of those those religions beginning and as you said you go backwards and forwards and and, and sideways you don't always go go into the future can you remember some of the key learnings that you've taken away and then delivered into another life well it's my understanding that that i have these lives to be an advisor or a friend uh, to gently, as best I can, uh, to make the religion as as uh, loving as possible. Okay. So, as an example, I was a friend of Muhammad. Um, I was one of Moses' uh, sons. I was. Uh, Salome or Salome, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, uh, one of Jesus' disciples uh, and the mother of James and John, I think it was. Um, uh, I was one of the five men who offered uh, his head to the uh, head uh, uh, guru uh, of the Sikh uh, religion, and I became one of his trusted five advisors. So in other words, I've been around for for all these kind of startups. So, so now, I was thinking. So you've got three books now on the gentle way. Um, uh-huh. What what's the 
what is is it three levels that we're talking about or is it three different directions of training um what's it's a, it's a progression it's okay. a progression it's a progression yeah first uh, book was mostly about how i i use um uh requesting benevolent outcomes in my business and travels to uh can and and milan and you know uh budapest and places like that as part of my my uh, business and um, uh, then the second book, where I'd been calling these benevolent prayers living prayers, I switched to make it more understandable to people. about, And so I created something simple that everyone of every single faith could say and feel like it was going to whoever they believe, believed uh, as their deity. And, and that's very important. Uh, my... My prayers are uh, inclusive and not di- divisive. Now, you 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 got into um, ET and the first contact, and and you've written a book about that and conversations with an ET. And mm-hmm. um, oh, now, where did that come about, and how do aliens, I guess as we call it, or ET, play into? the world and the role as as you said if there's a creator who's doing this world plan like how we are but mm-hmm. none of the other creators did it so where are the aliens from okay um you have to understand there's trillions of inhabited uh planets in our universe okay some of them some of them uh, are over a billion even six billion years old so they're very far ahead of us um, as far as technical, uh, technologically. But what the creator saw is that everyone had gotten to a point where it was like they were on a level of, say, 5.3, 5.4, and now we're at 5.0. And, and so, um, uh, but they weren't, uh, they weren't increasing their vibrational levels. So I, I guess he had to figure out, he had to shake things up. And so he sent his emissaries uh, to to a, a number of these planets, and I was told when an emissary from the Creator shows up uh, and asks you to do something, you can refuse, but no one ever does. And so uh, the Creator was asking them to take part in this Earth experiment where uh, uh, they were creating a, a special space-time continuum to contain this negative energy that we were going to work with and um and uh, so the creator asked for volunteers for souls so as an example uh, our souls volunteered to fast track in order to become a creator okay that's one set of souls another set were uh, guardian angels these are whole souls that were very powerful um and uh They've been around so long uh, that uh, that they glow a, a golden light. They're called golden light beings. And and uh, Theo said that when the call went out for volunteers to be guardian angels, uh, he said humorously, only um, uh, golden light beings need to apply because they needed they needed these uh, uh, beings that were very uh, powerful and could handle uh, millions and millions of lives. And then there's another uh, over a million souls that handle all the the prayers on earth. They are answered answered uh, instantaneously, but according to your your soul contract. And and then you know when you get into our souls, our souls uh, not only uh, have have lives going on on earth where they where we are soul fragments, and there's six to twelve. Uh, on average, in a soul cluster, all right, um, but they may be having a half million to a million lives going on all at the same time all across the universe. And and so our, all of our souls uh, had had thousands of lives on other planets before we ever got to Earth. Originally, I was told that we had to have a spiritual life before we could qualify, but in actuality, they were spoon-feeding me the information and I've been told, I've been corrected that we had to have reached a vibrational level, certain vibrational level, 
because before we could take part in the Earth experiment. So that's uh, you know, and, and our guides, as I was mention, mentioning to Julie, our guides are uh, our guardian angels have never had a life on Earth, but our guides are all fragments of us, and and so you typically your main guide. Uh, will be from your soul cluster, and, and then the other guides come and go according to what you're doing in the life. So as an example, in my life, when I was in the tour business, I had two two guides that helped me with that. Then I got into international film distribution, have a couple of guides helping me with that. Uh, writing, I have two guides that helped me with that. My mother in this life now uh, takes care of me on all things feminine because 75 or 80 percent of the people that subscribe to my newsletter are women. So you have these guides that come and go as you need them. Now, you know, you, you have telepathic contact with ET, as you would say, from another planet. How does that yes. differ from when you're dealing with a uh, guardian angel? Okay. It's, it's just, uh, uh, and, and, and Tura tunes in when I'm, when I'm asking questions to Theo and Gaia, the soul of the earth. So uh, I, I seem to have a big audience. When, when I'm asking these questions, um, I was, uh, in fact, I uh, was talking to Theo one day, and he said, oh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, an ET is uh, tuning in right now, and, and you probably want to speak to him. Well, I about dropped uh, on the floor uh, because I thought I was having this private conversation with my own guardian angel, and it was it was like a party line. So, you know, but they do it out of love, and all these ETs are are kind of tuning into me to find out what level we're on, you know, what what level of questions we're asking uh, that are coming along. So, um, so back to these emissaries, they were asked to to work on bodies and everything to find an Earth human. So they they knew how to do it, but they didn't have the practical experience. It was the way I, it was described to me. So they started going through all these bodies like Littlefoot and and uh, or Lucy and and Littlefoot, and and eventually um, uh, Neanderthals. And uh, and if you've been reading the news recently, uh, there was a, a a race called the uh, Denisovans. And then they discovered they were mating with the Neanderthals. So recently I asked about that, and the Denisovans were, um, uh, there was only about a million of them, and uh, but they were almost, they were like kissing cousins to the Neanderthals. They were similar, but not exactly the same. Both of them had about 70% of our mental capacity that we have today, and then they were allowed uh uh, to die out, and along came the cro magnets that had a hundred percent of our uh, of our uh, mental capacity, but they had some things that they had to tweak with on their bodies and that 's where the Adam and Eve model came along sixty thousand years ago so, Tom, and these, these e go, uh, one more thing these e t s could produce these bodies uh it 'd be like a giant three uh, d printer they could Produce them in two and a half minutes. So, um, I'm sorry for interrupting you just then, Tom. But thank you for finishing that. Um, I just want to, I suppose, to help people out there because your knowledge is so, um, it's just a hu huge. Um, and you very, very easily talk about some very complex scenarios. So I'm just wondering, if somebody was listening to this interview now and um, like myself and Al, you know, very interested in what you've got to say and want to understand it more, how would you encourage them to do that and, and, and what would your advice be? Oh, okay. Number one would be I, I have a weekly newsletter that's free, okay? They can go to the gentle, www.thegentlewaybook.com and on the front page, there's a little blue box, and they can subscribe to my newsletter um, there. On on my website, I have archived every single newsletter from 2007 onwards. I would suggest maybe starting with the the last four or five and sort of reading those. 
I, I actually had a lady that emailed me the other day and told me she's read every single one, which is a lot of reading. Um, yeah. and, and you'll see my hits and misses. You see why I got in trouble on probabilities and uh, and so on. So um, that's that's one way to start. I also tell people, hey, look, you can do what I'm I'm doing. Uh, if you go to www.dicksutphen, S-U-T-P-H-E-N, dot com, remember this is the guy that that I went to a seminar and got me over the hump. Uh, way down, if you click on the store and way down at the bottom, there's a CD or MP3 you can buy called Spirit Guides. He takes you into this meditative state, and then he says, okay, you can ask questions now, so you say I wish to speak to my guardian angel, and you'll it'll sound like you're talking to yourself. Hi, you know Julie, this is uh, this is your guardian angel, and you say, okay, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, and you ask a couple of questions, and then uh, Dick comes back on and he says, okay, I'm going to bring you up and out, and and that's where you can start. So you can do this yourself, and I and I have a, a number of people that have done that. And how would you encourage people? Because um, w- doing what, what you and I will do in, in kind of that telepathy and that communication with spirit, it takes quite a lot of confidence, doesn't it, to be able to say, these are not my words that I'm, I'm hearing. And I, I use the word hearing in inverted commas because it's normally as a thought. So we just know that's what's being said to us. How do you help people understand and differentiate between the voice of spirit, which comes into us as more of a knowing, than our own thought process? Okay, repeat that one more time. How do how do? Sorry. So when when um, many mediums, many people that communicate telepathically uh, with spirit will will say they don't necessarily hear in the same way as we do what's being said to them, it's a knowing because it's internal, it's, it's telepathy, it's not audible. So how, do you, how would you help people to, because when you first go into that meditative state to ask for your guide or your guardian angel to make contact with you, the inf- it's all of a sudden there's a different communication style than we're used to. We're used to hearing people standing in front of us, talking to us, and we hear it as sound waves that come between the two. How do you help people to have confidence that the words that they are knowing as coming into their mind are those of, of spirit and not of kind of themselves making it up almost? Well, keep in mind, I've already talked about being in a meditative state. And, and so as an example, gosh, I can only probably give you examples. Um, um, hmm. Let me go back. Okay, I'll, I'll try and give you just an example. Um, so uh, uh, I'll say, Gaia, uh, you said the highest probability would be for Mr. Trump to be elected for a second term. What is that probability? And then what is the probability for him serving his whole second term? Tom, the probability of him serving a second term would be at 80% right now. Should he be elected? the probability of serving the full four years again would be over 80%. Not a slam dunk, but very close. He would not be impeached and nor assassinated. So you see, that's that's what I receive. I'm, I'm sitting at a computer when I'm in this meditative uh, uh, state, and I'm typing as fast as I can and, and trying not to make too many mistakes when I'm listening to, if this is like almost a telephone conversation. Except that you, it's all mental. Uh, yeah, and that's the that's the bit I'm I'm I I'm suppose I'm 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 asking about because when that when I was first tasked with that, you know, sit in a, in a quiet room, uh, ask your guide to make themselves known to you, it seemed bizarre because I was thinking, well, how can I? How would I know? How would I know that these are not my own thoughts and that actually these are the thoughts and words of spirit? Um, and the only way I can describe that to people is you just know. You absolutely know the difference. But how I, how I can encourage people to, to believe in themselves and believe that, that those are the words of something that they cannot see, they cannot necessarily feel, um, 
it's really quite complicated. And I'm just wondering how how you encourage people in that in that moment okay. in their in that kind of vulnerability that they have in that time. Sure. For a long time, when I would when uh, I always kind of first start talking with with Gaia because I typically will have people sending in a lot of questions about the Earth, and and Gaia has told me that we've had these conversations for several hundred years. Okay, several uh, tons of lifetimes. So she knows me pretty well, and and so when I started doing this in fair, say the fairly early days, um, it would seem like I was just talking to myself in a way. Okay, listening. Uh, uh, oh, Gaia, uh, uh, you know I send my love to you. Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Godspeed or whatever. And, and in fact, that's they have these little things that when you start talking to them. Um, uh, I'll say, Gaia, are you here for me? Yes, I am, Tom. And then at the end, she'll say, um, uh, she'll say, Godspeed and have a, a wonderful day, Tom. And Godspeed was kind of an old saying, and I mentioned that to her, and she said, Oh, you said that to me many, many times in the past. So it's kind of like our way that we know it's, it's each other, or at least I know it's her. And for Theo, I say, Theo on my shoulder, and he says, I'm right by your side, Tom. Uh, with your with your guides uh, along with your guides, uh, good morning, and and then for Antura, Antura will say uh, Antura in the wings, Tom, like a stage. So in other words, they have these little things that they say that um, lets me know now. But when you start, you just uh, just play along. Say, well, gosh, that sounds like me thinking, but okay, uh, uh, you know, let me ask a question. When you ask a question, you think you know the answer, and you get a completely different answer. You know you're you're speaking to the entity that you're you've asked to talk to. Wow, this has been uh, very interesting. But this episode, we're running out of time, so um, I'm going to say thank you, and we'll have you on again very soon, Tom T. Great. Moore, and uh, and the gentle way. Thanks for having me. To find out more about our show, guests, or listen to a previous show, visit our website at www.somethingweirdmedia.com. Show's over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Well, good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.